explain this frightening and seemingly irreversible outbreak. She was going down on the list and she sure. didn't know if they lived by each other. They did sports together. They were in the girls' locker room together. We were kind of like almost making little charts to figure out, oh, well, this is a cheerleader. This one wasn't Pasta. This one wasn't Diane. This one is an artist. And you get to the point where you go, it's either completely unrelated or they've all gotten into something. Either that it was isolated at the school, there must be something at the school causing that. They didn't know the school lunch that someone ate that water. And there were people questioning, how do you know it's not environmental? To come from people's fears, the state health department suggested, why don't you have the building looked at by an industrial hygienist? A private company did environmental testing at the school in December. The report found that no substances were detected within the school building that might cause any health issues in the student or staff population. Despite this, Care is researching for anything that could possibly explain and stop the spread of this terrifying illness. And there was one area of the school that was yet to be tested. The only thing that came up in common was that they were all on the field. Some were doing band, some were doing soccer, but they had all been on the field at the school. Yeah, yeah, there's rumors that part of the playing fields of the school were dumped for dumping grounds at one time. You know, we got some aerial pictures, but, you know, unless they dig, and I don't know what's in there. I think that something happened on that field that compromised her immune system. These kids are just totally normal, and then next thing you know, they're going to and their arms are swinging, and you feel frustrated and helpless because you don't know what you can do, and, um, you're just not getting any answers. But a possible cause did emerge when the first few cases were sent to leading neurologists 50 miles away in the city of Buffalo. It was a simple initial referral to us. Dr. McVig and I evaluated the patient, and the girl had unusual symptoms. She was stuttering and had rhythmic movements of the upper extremity, um, head tilting, head jerking to the side. If I would suggest how are the movements, what do they look like, they, before my eyes would become worse. I started to get a couple more kids come in, all young women. By the fourth patient, and the first thing he said was, what, what high school did you go to? That mystery illness that has sickened girls in the Roy High School now has a name. Doctors have determined the girls have a stress-induced conversion disorder. It starts as a mental or emotional crisis, a scary or stressful incident of some kind, and converts to a physical problem. Conversion disorder is uh, the manifestation of um, psychological symptoms in a physical form. Usually there's some sort of precipitant. Some people have had a history of abuse in the past. Some people just have stress or anxiety in their lives that are so overwhelming they have difficulty dealing with it. But as more cases came forward, the doctors became aware they had a unique situation on their hands. Individually, this would be a conversion disorder, but when you take it collectively, it turns into a mass epidemic illness. Some people refer to it as mass hysteria. This is an outdated term that we no longer use. In my 25 years of practicing, this is the first case of uh, uh, mass psychogenic illness. Historically, we know that this occurs in small rural communities. A group of individuals who are close together, like in schools, factories, or nunneries. This does occur more often in women. Previous cases of mass hysteria had normally manifested as fainting, nausea, and even sudden blindness. But this Tourette-like disorder was extremely rare. They're usually an index case or somebody who starts the symptomatology, and it's usually somebody who truly has some sort of a version of this. There were two individuals at the school who had a history of a diagnosis of tick or threat disorder. The doctors believed the girls subconsciously took on the symptoms of the genuine Tourette sufferers as a means to release their own trauma. But for some parents, the idea that their daughter's symptoms were psychological was difficult to accept.
I just didn't feel that it was Katie. I mean, she was outgoing, she was doing her schoolwork, she was in sports, she had a boyfriend. Everything was going well for her. And Katie was on the high honor when this all started. She never really seemed to be stressed about anything. To tell a parent that your daughter does not have a disease causing these real symptoms is frustrating. I expected a fight. I know my daughter. I mean, I'm, I'm home with my kids, and, you know, I, I know they're on. It just does not make sense. No one wants to hear that anything is with himself. They want to kill or shot or to blame it on the environment or to blame it on the infection, and I want them to have to kill together. Completely out of this world to me that they would say this was a psychiatric issue for her to develop into this. Not that she would never have any problems. She's a teenager, has a boyfriend. There's a lot of issues that we all go through in our regular lives. Nobody has a perfect life. But for her to develop into this because of a psychiatric issue, absolutely not. Disorder, you know, I really feel like saying to them, stop lying to me and just tell me you don't know what the hell's going on. Determined to find a diagnosis that they believe in, Fosher and her daughter try to find a second opinion. So, Dad, found it as a juvenile Atlantic blue tan fish. I didn't know that's you. 